All right, we wrap this one up. We got first course. Take a look at that Odell, first course. Complete. Concrete. Odell. Complete. Concrete. Odell. Oh, yeah. Complete. Concrete. Oh, wow. The theme's back. All right, I, here, here I am with Kenny. Yeah. And I'm helping him out on this pour today. And yeah. here's what he's got going. He brought his own pump, plus he's gonna lay the block back here. We've got block right down in here. He's got his split set up, four highs, rebar's tied off at, looks like about four feet. Yep. And they're coming up about, what do you think, four courses? Three? Yeah, I think we're gonna come up four courses because they're gonna put uh, some chain link with privacy on top of that. So basically we're building a combo wall here. So oh yeah. Not that tall. Oh yeah, so you're gonna sink some post into the top of this wall and then grout it. Correct, correct. Oh, all right. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead, it's not that much, so we're gonna hand mix that uh, when we do the grout. Nice. Yeah. We got Eric here, he's a, yep. he's a professional hand mixer. Oh yeah, he's oh, been yeah. on a few jobs. Oh yeah. He knows how to mix concrete real well. Yep, yep. I was yep. gonna suggest, what do, we, what do you think about this gravel right here, just adding some sand and cement to it? We could. Yeah, this would, this would be fine to grout that because it doesn't need to be that strong. Yeah, 1,500 PSI is probably right. enough. Yeah. Looks like you graded this about, what, four and a half, five inches, everything? Yeah, we're putting a 12 by 12 gazebo on top of this. So since it's gonna have a structure on it, I wanted to make sure that I was a little thicker here. It didn't call for a footing at all, um, but we have uh, a big slope back here and we're making that up because we're gonna end up putting uh, artificial turf over here. So I wanted this to be all natural and uh, so that this is nice and has, a, you know, some good dirt. Yeah, this whole, this re this wall is kind of like a retaining for this whole Correct. area. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's concrete. We got a front loader s and is here. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to uh, go ahead and admire your handy electrical work for a minute. Oh, here's what he's got. He's got rigids coming out of the ground. His couplings, his female couplings, where he does that transition fitting from the EMT or rigid to the conduit, he's got those flush. So you could still work the nuts and um, potentially do a little work on these pipes if you ever had to. Then he's, so he's got two coming out, two coming out of that box. One comes over here where that red tape is. He's got it taped off for future. Then also he's got one line coming right over here because this is gonna come up a post of a gazebo. Now this other line here drops back down. And it pops out over there in that little planter bed between the retaining wall and the end of the slab for potential um, low voltage lighting along the new uh, wall. Anyway, that about sums it up. Now we gotta get down on the pour and then uh, finish it up, go to the next stage. What's the meter read? Uh, 1,000. Oh yeah. I'm gonna take it down a little bit. All right, so basically we just figured out the slump. So that, that slump meter is what he was asking about. It was at 1,000, so that lets him know if he wants to add water to it or not at that point. You think if I put a quarter in there, it'll dance? Yeah, it might just fall out of sight. Yeah. You need, you need, that's a dollar slot. So he's got this set up. We have a little bit of a break point at the corner of the house. It slopes to the left from the corner of the house and to the right from there. So that's your break point. We've got a six foot Milwaukee red stick here. It's basically a level that's designed to be able to screed or rod concrete with. And then at the same time, if you want, you could check level on the way out. He has his string line set there, uh, four inches above footing level, and that allows for the um, height of his block. So he's just eyeballing that four inches down. Maybe he's going three and a half, somewhere in that general area. Now you get to get down there and hold that stuff up, huh? Well, now I'm just kind of holding the rebar up in place. He's got some dobies under there, but um, we held it up as well. There's Doug on the bull float. 
Here I am on a hand float, wood hand float. And this is a 12 inch band. So that 12 inch band, we're gonna continue that on through the patio slab. So it looks like a continuous one foot band. This mix design is just your 3 8 P gravel and it's a, it's a 3000 PSI. Not sure if he had fiber in here. I think he did have fiber mesh in here. There's your big blue Fresno. It's a pretty windy day today, so fiber is really a good idea. It's not that hot, but uh, when it's windy, fiber is always good to put in there. Basically, what I did was I sealed it up pretty quickly because of the wind. As you can tell by the palm leaves in the background there. They're shaking pretty good. Even the fence is shaking. So we're going to put a lot of joints in here. It's going to be about on five foot centers both ways. One you know, off the corner of the house in both directions, then another off this corner, and then we'll split the middle on the large area. Right here, I'm tying a string line to the end of my pole so I can reach out and hold the line in place. So we're just going straight with the house. I pinned the pole against the house so we can put some pressure on the line. Same thing over here. In this case, I'm just trying to force it against the inside of the form. I make a pretty nice divot in the concrete, but not big, not a very big deal. Here's a three foot long cutter, two and a half inch deep. Whoa, that's a pile up, pile up an aisle. There's a big old hey, pile up. Keep the nose high, buddy. Yeah. Right here, we were debating putting this last join in, but we ended up doing it. I think it was a good choice. So Kenny now is sticking to the block. And as he sets the block, he stabs the post. He's got the good post. He's got the 40 gauge. So they're a lot stronger than your typical post. I don't even think they have a 40 gauge at the depot. You, they only have that, that thin stuff. Oh, damn. Complete. Concrete. Yeah. <laughs> so he sets them in all the way into the footing. So they'll not only be in the footing, but they'll be also grouted within the wall because this wall will get solid grouted. Concrete. The wall's coming up, I believe three or four courses. Then there's going to be chain link to make up the difference. And then it's going to get the privacy slats in the chain link. Got me a brand new hand edger, six inches wide, half inch radius. Got that at Concrete Accessories in Las Vegas for $14. I thought that was a good deal, so I bought two of them. Right, it's about that time to get out there on the sliders. And I'm using the fiberglass sliders. I prefer those over the steel ones because you have more control with them. They're a little bit wider. They don't slip around so much. Because you know when you have a lot of upper body strength and you're pushing on those trowels, if you've got like the metal sliders, your whole rear end starts spinning. So you need the fiberglass to kind of lock that in when you have the you know super upper body strength.
All right, we wrapped this one up. We got first course. Take a look at that Odell, first course. Complete. Odell, complete. Concrete. Odell, oh, yeah. complete. Concrete. Oh, wow. The theme's back. Looks real good. Crunch out nice. Now we gotta do some cleanup. Pack it up, boys. So I don't know what happened there, but I can't even really like the theme, the Odell Complete Concrete theme. So he wasn't hearing it lately on a lot of the new videos. So he just started going with it randomly right here on the job site. And then we, then we all just ended up doing one word at a time. Anyway, that wraps it up. Turned out beautiful. If you like videos like this, check out this playlist. We made it just for you.